Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, August 7th, 2022. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 659. And, um, so apparently it's one of these. Let's talk about sex. I understand why it is. I'm just not sure if it should be, but I'll let Gary explain. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's another let's talk about a uh, sex episode uh, for our series. So here's the thing we did a couple episodes ago. We talked about um, beyond STIs. And we talked about meningococcal disease. And then we started talking about this thing that has really started to sweep uh, news in the, um, as we say, the GSM community, which is gender sexual minorities, um, which is monkeypox. <clears throat> as of this recording, last I knew the U.S. had over 7,000 cases. We are the nation with the highest amount. And I'm seeing a lot of, like, consternation online about this this issue about uh, it being an infectious disease, about people not calling it a gay disease, about people like about it always being referenced as um, men who have sex with men being the people that get it. Um, and then like the very few, very small percentage of individuals um, that may end up with it due to contact and that is not sexual contact. Um, and how that like, you know, becomes fodder for people talking about groomers and pedophiles and all sorts of shit. Oh, yes, Damon. Oh, yes. When a child ends up with monkeypox, but then the media is putting out there what the CDC has been saying that it's, you know, the majority of cases are men who have sex with men. Then people start making connections that don't technically exist. <laughs> right, right. So might be an ATAS episode for that's the thing. Well, right. So <laughs> here's the thing is in social media and, and online hookup apps and stuff and chat threads and all that, like monkeypox is a part of a conversation and in, in some places. I'm not gonna say it's everywhere, but I feel like it's really kind of rising um in terms of its uh I don't know if I want to say priority, but like its uh, relevance or prevalence, mm -hmm. I guess maybe. So and one of the things I'm a little concerned about is like opinion versus fact. I've seen people like make statements and I know that they are opinion, but it kind of bothers me a little bit because it seems like it's fact. And I'm mm -hmm. like, mm, got to be careful with that. So like when you start yeah. making accusations about the government not wanting to treat, not wanting to vaccinate, like mm -hmm. um, not taking action, you you're coming across as like. Because what people, I think, are not doing is they're not saying, I think. They just say the health department is not doing, the CDC is not doing, the government right. is not doing. Like, And I'm like, well, that's opinion. can only be fact if you have something to back it up, like if you have documentation or something mm -hmm. of that sort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, with my job, I feel pretty conflicted about this um, because – as a person who identifies as a cisgender male that is that labels himself as gay, um, I feel like I'm in the middle of all this because I also work in the public health realm right. where, you know, we are aware it is a, an infectious disease. We're aware of what the population is that primarily 
um, has the cases at the moment and will continue to have the cases. There's been a great many, you know, kind of blogs, articles, op-eds and stuff posted about, you know, um, while the CDC has changed their uh, information recently and kind of been leaning more towards referencing like people taking personal mitigation measures, um, you know, uh, it's it's a delicate balance Mm -hmm. because the cdc is not outright saying to people don't have sex and yet (laughs) the reality is if you were to be abstinent you're drastically reducing your potential for exposure so when there's discussions and conversations about like knowing who your partners are considering like staying in a sex pod Mm -hmm. um, for those of you that don't know what that is it was something we referenced way back during uh covid about having like a select like small number of individuals that are kind of uh, in the same group that you're all aware of what your statuses are. Um, that was kind of more about um, households and stuff like that. So that would be COL 569 bubble slash pods. That's wild because it's the same three numbers in a different order. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. So right, right. Yeah. And then the other thing that's kind of becoming challenging is I'm seeing, you know, these conversations, these echoes being made about the origins of the AIDS epidemic from 40 years ago and how the CDC just like kind of turned its back on the gay, you know, male community and didn't want to do anything and, you know, took too long to react and and that kind of stuff. Um, Yeah. and, and, And like, I get it. I understand the frustration and the which can lead to outrage and the anger. Um, yeah. You know, and then I see stuff like, you know, posted San Francisco today. No, today? No, tomorrow. Because tomorrow's the 8th, right? Yeah. There's going to be a cut the red tape um, protest. You know, more treatment, more testing, more vaccines now. And people are welcome to, to protest. I'm not against that stuff. But there's a part of me that's like, it feels where the really disconnect... Familiar. Right. Where the disconnect is, is they're not aware of what's going on currently. But then again, it's it, in a way, it's not enough soon enough, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's the sad part. Back in May, when, when we had the first cases, those of us that work in this kind of sphere, when we knew who the primary cases were, you could easily predict where things were going to go. Okay. And part of the big thing is, is because individuals can be um, non-symptomatic or have very mild symptoms that others would not know when they're having close contact with another person. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's so it's one of these things that I'm like, you know, social media, <laughs> it's really kind of posing a challenge for people to to know the information and to understand it and um mm-hmm. to feel comfortable about stuff go ahead damon no i'm just it's it's very but becoming a very double-edged sword is in a sense because mm-hmm. social media is a great way to get information out there it's a great way for people to start talking and having these conversations and being open and frank about their um you know th- this being a thing and pe- making people aware, um, especially in our communities where um, we sometimes don't always make the, the best decisions for ourselves when certain hormones and stuff start going. Um, so the idea of, yes, please like make sure that we know what's going on so that we can make those personal choices but on the flip of that, there's the misinformation, there's the misrepresentation of of information out there that mm-hmm. makes it harder to gauge. Um, this has become, it's rather interesting where, um, like, that this, that we knew that kind of this was where it was coming from and the weird correlations that you can make um but this is monkeypox is not a sti we can kind of say that while it can be transmitted that way it's the same as if like well you know 
people aren't like chicken pox or what have you, like those kind of diseases, those are, they're kind of transmitted in this kind of, in this fashion, similar fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, infected people in close contact with other, or with people who are not infected and aren't immune, uh, vaccinated to against it. So it, is it a problem? Yes, it's growing, you know, very quickly and very rapidly. And it surprises me that it is growing so rapidly, but then it doesn't surprise me. Well, right. So to the latter part, like where you were like, it kind of surprised me. And then you're like, and then again, it doesn't. And I'm like, right, that part, like the, the, it doesn't surprise me. This is the thing I was talking about with someone yesterday. I said, you know, the, the difficulty for our society to comprehend or understand or want to face the reality mm-hmm. that men are highly sexual mm-hmm. period and i'm not talking about like uh gay men i'm just talking about men mm-hmm. period like the purpose is to procreate that's how that we function as a species like most individuals that are male have hormones different attributes and variables that make them want to make more and Therefore, you know, they attempted to do that. And that's one of the things that is, you know, part of me that I'm like, I don't understand why people like didn't under, didn't get why this was like going to be mm-hmm. probably a challenge yeah. <laughs> because yeah. I'm like, you know, it's, it's all fine and dandy to kind of talk about stuff. And I get it. You know, in the past week, there's been newer stuff about like, you know, kind of maybe not having random hookups. Um, not necessarily going to sex parties or to back rooms and, you know, and dark spaces and that kind of stuff. And I understand it, you know, and some people have actually been a little bit more vocal and are like, you know what, I'm just going to chill for a mm-hmm. little bit and not really kind of be my freedom loving ho self <laughs> to do what I want, wherever I want with whoever I want, because yeah. you just don't know. And one of the biggest key things is we've got this window period before you really start to have right. any symptoms or see something. And yeah. by then, like, you know, do you even remember who you were with? You know, mm-hmm. but I remember <laughs> back in my day, I remember after I came out a couple of years later, there was this like kind of thing. And we're all about the kind of in the same age range. I don't know if you remember this about like, trying to remember how many people you've had sex with. Mm-hmm. And it was like, you know, if I'd written it down somewhere or kept track, I would know like whether or not there's a comma, um, you know, or <laughs> because, you know, it's like, well, what do you count? Do you count every dick you ever sucked? Um, you know, or who sucked you? Like, does that count as sex? I mean, you know, all that kind of stuff from back mm-hmm. then. But, but my point is, is that, you know, like, as I said to someone yesterday, I was like, okay, so seven to 11 minutes, you know, and then, you know, there's an orgasm, a release, a flood of hormones, you move on with your day, there's some stress relief. I was mm-hmm. like, that's one of the primary things that I think people kind of struggle with is they don't understand that, or ignore it, or like, yeah. you know, it's too much for you them, try, or yeah, whatever. You try to, like, we were talking about this earlier during the pre-show, it's, it's justification. Mm. Justifying your actions. Okay. You know, and 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 sometimes again, just justification is not always a negative thing. It can be, but like, you know, we we as you know, men, um, as you said, we we have we we are sexual. We're primal. We want you know to get that release. We everyone wants that rush, as it were. So you try to think of way reasons to do it even in some of these uncertain times um you know we just you know as we're just kind of still in and you know for the past few years we've been dealing with this issue um with the pandemic with regards to like you know playing quote unquote safely mm-hmm. are safer um finding ways because you may be susceptible to, you know, the ill to COVID and what have you. But what happened, what, you know, how do you, how do you justify that in your mind? You really want to get this nut, like, really, like, God damn it. So you've been pent up, you're frustrated, can't concentrate, whatever, whatever, whatever. And you just need to 
do something. And no offense, um, your 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 palm and your five friends are not really helping, are not really doing it for you. Well, maybe they want a break, or maybe they need a break. <laughs> maybe they tired. <laughs> We're done. Maybe they're uh, on strike. <laughs> We can only do this for so long. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so yeah, so like you, you, you do, you figure it out, and you, you find a way in your head to rationalize it. Um, right. COVID being like, I'll just use COVID as the example. Like, you know, oh well, if we, if he just does this while I, like, am standing outside in the air or fresh air and you know all this stuff is around you know you know the air will keep anything from you know passing through each other as we kind of play around and do this thing that'll be the reason why or you know maybe the room is well ventilated you know whatever whatever you can come up with to justify the nut and now uh it's you know with with monkeypox i think it's going to be a very interesting thing i think we're going to see a lot of um looking at people if you know what i mean like i think people are, there's going to be a really a really sharp incline in like people wanting pictures of you right now like an actual face picture of mm. what you look like at this moment um it's fair. Maybe even like a picture from of your you know your genitals at you know that moment you know before anything happens you know there are ways. I mean, should we be having these conversations? Absolutely, we should be 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 having these like STI you know you know all these kind of conversations so that you know we can all be better prepared. Not that getting an STI is a bad thing. Just, you know, you should be having these conversations. Um, I think the best, or not the best part, the interesting part of all this will be how hard, how heavy will this get? Mm -hmm. Will we reach, you know, I don't want to say we're going to reach pandemic levels, but I think it's going to be big. But on the flip of that, there are a lot of places and areas that are trying to mitigate factors. I have, you know, and Gary knows, we have many friends in Chicago. Um, and they have been really gung-ho on having um, vaccination sessions at um, LGBT bars in spaces where they know that people can go or will be able to go or know where they are and can get the um get the vaccine um mm -hmm. i'm in ohio and we are not even we haven't even begun doing vaccinations for to the general public um i think it is now uh if i looked at the hamilton county site again um it is for people who are who may have been exposed only so. right i mean and and that is one of the difficulties i think that's happening i mean i i was discussing this with a coworker recently i was like it's embarrassing to see people posting about you know what i could do i could drive across the border to canada as a non-resident and get my first shot and come back in four weeks and get my second shot long before i could possibly get it locally Mm -hmm. And it's a fair criticism, you know, and, and right now where we are, like, this is the thing that I've been kind of talking about with some folks, but it's difficult, I think, for folks to understand is, you know, this was not considered um, an infectious disease of concern for quite a long time. Um, there wasn't that many cases of it. And therefore, we did not have a vaccine stockpile an inventory to be prepared for this. And so we're doing what we can with what we have, but 
it is difficult when if you know you're looking at a a one week to three week you know potential incubation period like by the time someone you know starts having symptoms and then gets tested and comes up positive like you know we're we're all a month out from Mm -hmm. when the you know exposure occurred and so to be preventative you know to think of it in terms of prep you know as a Mm pre-exposure item you know it's it's okay well you would need to be vaccinated but if there's not a supply then you know Mm -hmm. we're kind of back to the whole what are you going to be able to do? Yeah. So I will say this. There's nothing been officially announced right now. Um, we'll have a link or two uh, on the website regarding stuff about from the CDC. One of the interesting things is they added a new element um, just two days ago um, called Safer Sex Social Gatherings and Monkeypox from the CDC. Um, and they mm. discuss a couple of topic items like how can a person lower their risk during sex? Um, what should a person do if they have a new or unexplained rash or other symptoms? How can a person lower the chance of getting monkeypox at places like raves, parties, clubs, and festivals? Um, mm-hmm. This is big deal. This yeah. this would have never happened in the past 40 years. Um, I have to say with Dr. Dimitri yeah. um, as the director of HIV putting in uh, to help with this at the CDC um, with the Biden administration, it's huge because um, – this is the thing that pops in my head. It is probably not the right way to say it, but I'm like, one of us, one <laughs> of us, like as a person who comes from our community, it is fully aware of how we are as a community, you know, um, is well-versed, educated, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, um, I don't want to speak on their behalf about their experience, but would not be surprised mm-hmm. um, if mm-hmm. uh, Dr. Dimitri has done some kinky ass shit and gay for him um (laughs) something tells me he looks good in a a harness for a lot of folks uh so (laughs) damon now goes to go look him up oh okay fact (laughs) i think when you last mentioned him i looked him up and i was like oh okay (laughs) well he looks good in a beard you know shaved head (laughs) um yeah. But no, so the the thing is, is that, uh, you know, this type of a posting would have probably not really been discussed before. Yeah. Um, or, you know, kind of hit head on in that way. And it's great. Um, and yet at the same time, it's like, well, what are we? What are we able to do? And I think what, what a lot of us struggle with is we don't like change and uncertainty just fries the human brain. Right. And so people want to know specifics like what what can and will be done, you know, blah, blah, blah. And this is just a very fluid situation. The reality is, and I've given this analogy to some people, I'm like, it's no different than COVID. When vaccinations became available, we went through this whole supply demand issue. There was way more demand and interest than there was supply. So there was a whole like, you know, one, two, three month frustration period that you couldn't get an appointment, couldn't get a vaccination. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the supply met the demand and then you have too much supply. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's what's happening right now. People, you know, vaccination events, activities, locations are throwing away, you know, inventory um, with COVID specifically because a vial has more than one dose in it. And so if you don't use up the full vial, well, then you have to dispose of it. Um, You know, and there's a whole deep freeze mechanism. Now, to say this about monkeypox, from what I know, uh, from people who work very closely in this, this is not Mm -hmm. the case. We have a single dose container, um, so that's not quite the same issue, and we don't have the deep freeze situation. So we've got some better options Mm -hmm. um, in terms of that. In fact, I just saw that there was a headline regarding about um, that there's a mRNA vaccine potential from Moderna that they're going to uh, study and consider uh, pursuing. Yeah. So, so, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff kind of going on, but that doesn't mitigate people's opinions, to go mm-hmm. back to my, you know, kind of earlier point. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I agree, you know, Ranger Skins, uh, sorry, Rangers King <laughs> 669 in the live chat said, <laughs> You know, we know that the Biden uh, declared the public health emergency for monkeypox, and we'll see what that leads to. It's fair. It's a huge thing. Um, some people were heavily critical that it was late in making that decision because it, it matters on a local level. You are now releasing funding to do things. I sat in on a session earlier this past week um, where directors of major health uh, departments in mostly bigger cities 
were highly critical of what their situation was. And one of them said, you could ship me 40,000 doses tomorrow. Do you know what I can't do? I can't distribute those 40,000 doses. I don't have enough staff. I don't have the, uh, the, the capability to put that into place right away. So right. we need we need to face the reality. And that's one of the, the things that's been highly critical is, you know, there's been some, you know, finger pointing at the government and be like, oh, you expect STI clinics to handle this? But this isn't our background. Like, this isn't our thing. You want health departments to handle this? But, like, this isn't this isn't what we're built for. This is not right. how this works. Um, yeah. And, and I know that sounds like a lot of finger pointing, but the reality is we just don't have a structure prepared for this. Right. Um, and so uh, I'm not saying all this to, like, doomsday and that, but I, I get the criticism. Yeah. And yet it, sometimes the criticism goes to this point um, that I want to bring up is that people are, you know – echoing where we were 40 years ago about things not being done. And mm -hmm. so like, you know, I have some of this imagery that I put in about act up and stuff. Um, and I think that's why people are protesting. I think that's why they're being vocal. I think that's, you know, why they're, mm -hmm. they're um, trying to push to get things accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I never want to take anyone's, ability to protest away. I do feel that considering that we've only known, you know, it's it's early enough and there is action being taken. I think people are just expecting things to happen immediately. And that's just not how this works. We should know all of this because we literally just had this happen two years ago. Sometimes things take time. So, especially when it's unexpected. Um, and in addition, as you mentioned, there's all the other factors that that fall into place with it. You know, right. we can have all the, we can have all the vaccines in the world to take, but if we don't have people to who are qualified to put them in bodies, then we, you know, it kind of is a moot point. Um, we can have, again, on the opposite of that, we can have all the people ready to do it, but if we don't have enough of the vaccine, you know, we can't, you know, we can't do it. Like I've, you know, we've, I've seen pictures of, of lines at, you know, clinics and, and bars and what have you, where people are waiting to get, you know, vaccinated and they're standing in these lines and there's a reason why it's, you know, because probably they have maybe four or five people able to do this. So it's going to take some time. Um, I'm a big believer in being patient in certain mm -hmm. in situations like this. Right. Um, uh, there's a part of me and I'll, you know, get personal a bit um, that wants to get the vaccine. Gary and I talked about this after I think the recent one of the recent podcasts because I know I'm going to an event in a high risk state where it, the numbers are high. So I want to be vaccinated so I don't have to worry about it. Having said that though, I live in Ohio, which has very few you know, cases right now while the number is increasing. So we're not getting the immediate flood of vaccines. And knowing the risk factors, not risk factors, knowing how this is spread and how susceptible people can be to it, I decided to take a step back. And I'm not going to, if, 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 if it, if I get notice or wind of, of it being available in Ohio, I will consider it. But I am not going to, I'm going to be patient and wait and, and do some other things to mitigate my um, potential for right. catching it. Um, you know, Jeff, you live in a, as I'm looking at the map, there's a lot of cases in your state, but I think you given what we know of your your lifestyle, 
I think you're not as worried about it. Yeah. Well, and, and one of the things that I, I think folks are quite maybe not understanding is like, you know, there, yeah, there are states with a lot of cases, but if you think about it and if you were to get the more of the data and the details, a lot of those cases are most likely in major metropolitan areas, mm -hmm. you know, so like New York has, you know, what, over 1800 cases, but the vast majority of them are in New York City. You know what I mean? And so um, and that's also one of the criticisms is like, you know, that the that as the vaccine is being made available, it's being sent to major po population areas because of the caseload. Um, that's how that kind of works. Like the numbers say, well, if we have a high amount of cases, then we have a high amount of exposure incidents. And therefore, we want to protect as many people as we can in that area if it's if it's at all possible. And it's not to ignore others, but um, it's kind of like uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's like rationing. Mm -hmm. It's like triage. Somebody's got to make the call. They've got to make the determination what who who is able to and who is not. Um, and I think that's where also where people are, you know, understandably critical. Um, but I don't know. I'm just. I guess I'm frustrated by like how some of the, the criticism comes across because I feel like it's almost like people kind of just yelling into the void. And I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. there's this thing that you can search and find information. Now, the downside is there's definitely an echo chamber effect. And so, like, you know, if if you don't believe, well, then you're probably going to find stuff that supports that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yep. I realize this is such an exciting topic and you know, <laughs> entertaining for folks. Um, but well, I think it's a matter of getting information out there. You know, that's again, while I'm we are we can be critical of social media and the internet in and in, in general generalities, um, information and knowledge is power. It always has been. And having the right or at least as most fact as factually correct as possible information is better than nothing at all. Um, you know, again, make your own decisions in what you want to do. Um, provide, you know, we're providing this, you know, knowledge to you. And again, we're not all, we're not doctors. No, um, we have right. a doctor, but uh, you know, again, it's, information that you can that you can consume and determine what you want to do with it uh if you want to throw caution to the wind and you know do all the things you've been doing you know so be it but understand you're doing it at your own risk um if you want to be more cautious then be more cautious um at the end of the day, it's your choice. Right. And and so, I mean, we reached that point kind of in COVID at a certain point. A number of individuals that I spoke with uh, all came to the same kind of thought process, which was there has been so much information put out there that it, like at that point, it's kind of like if you're choosing to ignore it or avoid it or not know and not, you know, uh, seek treatment or vaccination, then that's on you. But until that point, there is, you know, a, um, uh, I forget what we call that. There's, there's, there's a measurement of like, um, individuals being educated and finding out and knowing things, you know, um, I can't remember what it's called. It's like a depth measurement. I'm so sad. I can't remember what it is. Um, you know, when people get to, to know stuff and take care of it or be aware you know, so I just feel like, um, you know, you do what you can, but are you engaged? And if you are, where are you getting information from? Yeah. Don't listen to Mary Sue on the internet that just is like so tired of being unable to do you know, her freedoms, um, maybe take a minute and 
research something before you form your opinion. Like, get some facts. Find the research that's already been done. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah There's yeah, these yeah. people that specialize in doing this. <laughs> you know. I believe they're referred to as scientists. With, not even with quotes. I know. Well, it's well, no, not really. No, no quotes. It's a word. Just they're they're actually scientists. Doctors are a type of science, health science, <clears throat> biology. Oh God! Sorry. They've been doing Random, this for years. Totally. They spend thousands and thousands of dollars to get a good education. Mm-hmm. Many of them with years of practice. That's true. Science I really sh should not be doing this. So I, uh -oh. I'm not endorsing what I did. Just so everyone's aware. Um, I typed in monkeypox into Twitter just to see what comes up. Oh no! It is all over the place. Oh no! There are people praying it away. There are people like being critical of it. There are people saying because there's no deaths, why is it an emergency? <laughs> I mean, it's just. Oh my. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I... It, here's the thing: is if you're doing research, don't look at social media. <laughs> but that. but at if the, the same time top link though, says Jeff... Twitter, make sure it's like a news source that probably links to the news source or something like that no i agree with you but there's a part of me that's like well you could say don't trust social media or you know i said don't look at social media right right but then there's social a part media of me that's may like... have some things but most of it i mean you're talking about trying to find a needle in a haystack when it comes to good information on social media. this is why i'm not very social on social media anymore it's just because it's mostly a load of crap or peen I like the peen part, so that's why I do still look at it, but. I think my frustration is like, but on the other side is as, as someone who is in a field that is attempting to put information out and to reach people, like you go to where the people are. So if they're on social media, then you buy ad space on social media to try to get information out there in the hopes that they will see it and they will click a link. <laughs> they will learn something, um, you know, that they'll listen to the influencer that you paid <laughs> to have a discussion about this thing. Like, you know, whatever, Lord. whatever that is. Oh. What? Just, hi, <laughs> I'm Mrs. Influencer, and I'm here to talk to you about monkeypox. Just... Hey everyone, it's your, it's your right. boy Jimmy. Yep. <laughs> I wanted to tell you about this monkeypox thing. You don't have to worry as hard, but it's very important that you go get a shot or something. Yeah. <laughs> don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> God damn it! Why did yellow just pop into my head? <laughs> Mm -mm. I don't know. I, it, somebody talking like that and trying to convince me of certified facts doesn't really put me in a in a, in a very hopeful place. If if I take a glance at the links they may have, I put links in the com in the description down below. You know. And the link is CDC. Oh, I'll probably look at that. I'll be like, okay, cool. This video is great because it gave me a link. The rest of the video, crap. Give me, give me actual. Facts. Yeah. That, well, I mean, so this is what I mean. Like, like, uh, 
So there's this post and it says, we shut down the entire country for months over COVID at the demand of public health, quote unquote, experts. But telling gay dudes not to have orgies to stop monkeypox is a bridge too far for public health authorities to embrace. And then they're including a screenshot of a of a post where it says sex is a major driver for the global monkeypox outbreak. But health officials and longtime HIV activists say calls for abstinence don't work. But and that's the, true. And it's, well, and it's a Washington Post article that they're referencing in, inside of this snapshot picture and the title was as monkeypox strikes gay men officials debate warnings to limit partners and it was um this was from uh, a, a couple days ago on eight four is what's in the, the screenshot but i get it because i was reading about this this thing where they were saying you know like we know anecdotally from many years of dealing with hiv and stis in general telling mm -hmm. people not to have sex doesn't really work mm -hmm. they're gonna do it Mm hmm. They, like, that's just all there is to it. And, Didn't mean and, to make that rhyme, but, you know, I, so. <laughs> but it's it's true. It's the truth. It's it's hashtag truth. It's the like we we have strived for people. We have begged people for years. You know, we were as we keep, you know, kind of reflecting back on to 40 years ago. Um, that was a big like that was part of the conversations that they weren't being had. Um, again, to my knowledge, but again, it was still happening. It was still, you know, numbers were still climbing. It's still a thing, but it to kind of jump onto this. It's while it is hitting prevalently, you know, men who have sex with men or, or what have you, um, it, is still not just sex that is a factor. It's right, it's, it's it's not the only one, but the, mm -hmm. the the downside is is that's where we're finding the majority of cases. Yeah, it's I mean, and that's where I get the echo of the beginning yeah. of the AIDS epidemic when it was primarily in a community, mm -hmm. and then as someone pointed out recently, they their point of view, their opinion was that, you know, the nation started paying attention once HIV got into the blood supply. Mm -hmm. And the blood banks realized that they could be litigated for mm -hmm. killing people. Mm -hmm. And I thought about it and I was like, well, <laughs> their, 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 their rationale, their thought process is not necessarily incorrect, mm -hmm. but I also cannot state and will not accept it as fact on the right. record. Do you know right. what I mean? And I think right. it's part of where where I, I wanted to, you know, kind of have this discussion today. Um, just be because of that stuff, you know, it, it, you're trying to navigate that. Um, Rangers King said, um, I follow a cache of certified public health folks and researchers and et cetera who post source stuff on this, uh, all this going on. So anytime I want details, it doesn't already come across on my timeline. Um, I just search for it and check the people I follow feature. Um, and make sure it's one of the people that I recognize. Um, and they said on Twitter. And I get that. Like, you know, you're trying to figure out, like, is this somewhat reliable? Um, you know, can I can I therefore find it? Uh, can mm -hmm. I go further with it? Which I think is fair. Yeah. Uh, but that's also a person being proactive and taking that into account and thinking about that kind of stuff. And I don't know how much of that necessarily happens. You know, when I see in a chat thread, people are like, you know, I get it. You're frustrated and you're you're being hypercritical or highly critical or whatever you want to call it or just critical. But at the same time, I'm like, you're not boots on the ground. Mm -hmm. Like you're not working in the industry. You're not understanding what's happening. You don't have the intimate details of the decisions that are being made and how to best, um, you know, make the next steps, whatever those may be. So. And my concern is, is like you voicing that to either a small group of people or out to the whole public world or whatever, you know, say out through social media is that, you know, people absorb that. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think we have a, a highly critical thinking um, global population that will take a moment, maybe step back, consider it as opposed to just being like liking and sharing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, 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 right. It is a, you know, 
my I I I always grow a concern when something like this happens and the way it is being presented, um, especially through social media. Um, it gives me a concern. You know, it makes me worry uh, about how this is, how the perception is going to be taken and how drastic people may react to it. Um, because it's quote unquote affecting a certain population. Um, but we know that, you know, it's not just that, but it is the main, you know, area. So, um, kind of as I was saying earlier, make your own decisions, make your own choices, try to get information and I guess be safe. If you can be as safe as you can or choose to be um the i don't want to say quote unquote good thing about this about monkeypox is that is it is not it is not as um potentially terminable no that's the word i'm looking of well lethal yes thank you Thank you, Jeff. Um, but can knock you quite off your feet. Yes, yeah. Do you remember uh, when you were a kid and you had mon- monkey pox? I think this is a little worse, if I understand it correctly. I think you mean chicken pox? Chicken pox? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pox, there's a pox in it. It's not right, smallpox. No, no, no. Right. It's um, a different thing. Right, and, and I mean, and so this is one of the things that I don't think people can understand it's like as as we see more cases rise we will start seeing cases that have nothing to do necessarily with intimate sexual contact Mm -hmm. and so that is where most likely we will start seeing it in other like populations especially by age and i think that will become a reckoning for people to realize you know, like, oh, we had a picnic. We had a family reunion. We passed the baby around. So and so held the baby in their lap for like a, you know, a half hour or whatever. And then the baby comes down with it. And then everybody, you know, kind of freaks out. And it's like, well, if, mm-hmm. you know, the person doesn't have symptoms and they don't know that they're carrying and they're not vaccinated, mm-hmm. it's, it, you know, it, it's kind of any, anything's possible. Um, and I only use that as an, an an example analogy, not to scare people, to make them understand it's like there's so many variables and factors to take account of, and that people kind of I think make leaps in thought from one thing to another. Like they kind of connect dots that aren't necessarily there. And my concern is is that social media. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just had this thought of like, well, social media is infectious. Um, <laughs> so like, and and you know, that could be part of the problem or the challenge is, you know, is you're in dealing with an infectious disease and what does that say and where does it go? You know? Yeah. So that that's mostly what this is about. I really, this is sort of more kind of a, like a, I don't know if I would have called it a venting Dream of episode or whatever. <laughs> What's that, Jeff? Dream of consciousness. Kind of. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I just really wanted to kind of revisit it and make people aware that, you know, like, it's good to be educated. It's good to be engaged. Mm-hmm. And your feelings are completely valid. I would hope that you would take some time, think about things, do some research, ask some questions, mm-hmm. find people, get a hold of your local like health experts, you know. Um, and I will tell you this. If you talk to somebody and they don't know, find somebody who does. And especially mm-hmm. if that person doesn't seem to have any interest in getting answers for you. Right. Like that is my bigger concern right now is I feel like a lot of folks are pivoting and expecting either STI experts or infectious disease experts to be the ones to handle this stuff. Mm -hmm. And it annoys me on a personal level because I'm like, but this is just a public health issue in general. I get it that it's not as big as diabetes. It's not as big as cancer. It's not as big as heart disease. But you know who should be like kind of paying attention and have some awareness? Your general practitioner. 
Mm -hmm. because that's where we started seeing a problem early on with the rise in cases is because people were presenting with symptoms, but nobody knew what the symptoms meant. Mm -hmm. So people have a rash. You send them home with a script for calamine lotion. This is hypothetical. Yeah. Maybe that doesn't work. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, if, if, you know, oh, if they have a fever and a rash, most likely that indicates something. You know, the fever is the body's way of like expressing we're fighting an infection of some kind. Hence, Mm -hmm. your temperature rises. But even so, that's not necessarily the case for everybody. And I think that's the other part that people just don't understand and can be incredibly frustrated by. Uh, Not everything is clean cut. Every human body is completely different. Some people eat Taco Bell and they're fine. Other people eat Taco Bell, they shut themselves. You know, so the the reality <laughs> what <laughs> how did we go there? i saw a meme just today say and saying i got gas for a dollar 38 sadly it's from taco bell <laughs> that wasn't fair of me to call out taco bell that way in the analogy but my point is is like you know th- there's not necessarily predictability mm-hmm. <laughs> Because here's here's my thing, and I guess I am making a tangent, so my apologies to everybody. There's so much social media criticism about Taco Bell, and like it gives everybody the shits. And I'm like, I don't think that's the case. Do you know why? Because they're still in business, and they still making money. They still collected that coin. You still eating that stuff. So uh-huh. if everybody was shit themselves all the time, I'm pretty sure they go out of business. <laughs> I love how our conversation about my fucking sex. <laughs> or like, just because their food is so shit. good, they're they're willing to have some worse bowel movements than they're normal. willing to take the risk. Now we're back. Okay. Yes, I can see the relevancy. Very, very well done, David. They're willing to take the risk because it tastes so good. It's so pleasurable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I feel bad for even making that jump. Out. That's okay. It's perfectly fine. <laughs> Anyways. At least we were able to find some humor and, you know. Yeah. Look at that. But, you know, so I my feeling on it is, you know, keep an eye out on that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, if you're interested in the vaccine, figure out who your local provider is, you know, for that. I, I realize, like, you know, that puts responsibility on each of us to do that kind of stuff. But, you know, call your local health department. Call your state health department. Like, you know, mm-hmm. uh, figure out, you know, okay, who, who gave – COVID vaccinations before. And and the only thing I'm going to say about that right now is uh, don't be surprised if you contact like a nationwide company, like, you know, a pharmacy, like, I don't know, CVS or Rite Aid or Walgreens. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be it right now. Like they, they yeah. will be at some point probably, but not right now. No. So it's a, it's a little bit different. If you have a LGBTQ plus federally qualified health center in your area, That's probably your best bet to start. Um, Some cities have established them. It was our own community. It was like, we know what our needs are and we need to do things for ourselves. And it wasn't so much to put a middle finger up at everybody else, but it was like, I I think it's a comfort level. It's also an education level. Um, I've seen it time and time again. People post things online, you know, and they say, hey, does anybody know a gay doc? Or somebody who is familiar with, you know, non-binary patients or people that are trans or, you know, whatever that is, because they're looking for somebody that they can feel comfortable with that understands what their um, circumstances and their and their needs and their wants. So that's that's what I mean, you know, in terms of finding someone who you can get information from. And if you are interested, you know, to ask to request to be put on a wait list or information. Like I mentioned this at work recently, I was like. What about the idea of creating a distribution, you know, stream for communication about where things stand and what's coming next? It could be text messages, could be an email distro. Like there's, you know, but that's just me giving people ideas because I'm like, my, my current concern is, is that the less you say, the more problematic it becomes because then people just, you know, they... They eat up all the treats, not knowing that the treats are actually problematic. Mm. 
you know what I mean? In terms of like, and the yeah. treats are the nuggets of information that they get, the shit that they hear from other people, the stuff that they see online, whatever that, you know, like that would, to me, it is an echo a little bit of what we dealt with in COVID. There was a lot of stuff that came out and people were saying a lot of things. And then over time we figured some things out and I find it interesting because some people are also pointing out, like, you remember when we washed everything, like in the beginning of COVID where like you went through all these like super like Mm -hmm. extra steps to get your groceries and to bring them home and like how you like disinfected every blessed thing and you wore like three layers and da 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 da. I remember watching videos about this, like how to sanitize all your groceries when you bring them in the house and, you know, the, the bag and the packaging and all this kind of stuff. Um, and we learned over time it is primarily airborne. It doesn't really last on surfaces, you know, and that stuff kind of went away. But it made sense in the moment based on what information we had, which wasn't honestly that much. Mm. And so I feel that way again, that we're kind of at a point where it's like we're doing the best we can with the information that we have. But it, you know, we also kind of need to be a little careful about that. And and hopefully no one's um, turning towards alternative methods of treatment. Um, and by that, I mean, like, you're welcome to pursue them, but just be careful because, you know, some things are just basically snake oil. It's it's people trying to separate you from your money and your health is not necessarily worth that um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. That's my one of my other concerns, so to speak. With that stuff. Yeah. So in time, we'll probably retouch the, you know, the topic and and provide some updates and things. It's just difficult with things changing so quickly um, right? to, to be a- aware of that. And something that people might not necessarily know, um, I'm pretty sure anybody can do it. Let me check right now. Um, if you go to a, quite a bit of websites that are public facing, um, you can typically follow or request to get updates of information. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how you do that. Because I know I've done it before where I've requested from like a Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, you can do it with Medicare. I know I've done it with CDC where you um, put in a request and they basically put you on an email distro list. And you're ah. not going to get spammed. Um, but as things come up, um, as health notices come out, that kind of stuff, um, you can be made aware of different things uh, that take place, which is something to consider. Um, if I find it, yeah. I'll, I'll add it to the doc for folks to, to so that they can click on it. And basically, you just put in an email address, and then they follow up with you on that. Cool. Email list. We're we're going back to some of the olden days thing. Yeah. Remember the, the BML. The bear mailing I, list. Yep. I don't think I was ever a part of that. Yeah, I never. But it existed. I don't remember it. I just didn't want it staying in my email box. But that was a different type of email unless. Agreed. <laughs> That's all COVID-19. Anyway, think... sorry. I'm trying to research some stuff here as we wrap up. But yeah. So um, to recap, uh, just be aware. Pay attention. Uh, I would not say trust everything that immediately that you read or see. Um, but at the same time, don't disregard everything. It's it, it, The difficulty is the filtering. Right. And the uh, Skype's deciding that you want to freeze you or your internet connection not doing the, it. Yeah, very that well. makes the most sense. It's relevant. Well, that's lovely. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like that's the end, right? Question? I'm good. Same. All right. With that, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything otherwise, there's plenty of ways to contact us. You can do that by coming in our blog at CubsOutLot.com, where Gary will be providing a couple of links in the show notes. Uh, you can also shoot us an email at CubsOutLot at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, like or otherwise, at 361 talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cups Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can also join our social or uh, entourage chat on Telegram at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you would like to see when we're planning on recording these shows, you can do that at our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. 
If you would like to support us, you can do that in many ways, including purchasing some merchandise, such as a Consent is My Foreplay shirt, a uh, logo shirt, a hat, a mug. Uh, you can do all that at Zazzle at Zazzle.com slash Cups Out Loud. Uh, some of those are, designs are designed by Smash Human. You can find more of his the work and support him at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Get the show a little bit earlier, as well as getting the pre and post show. Uh, if you would like to send us some don a donation to help us improve the podcast, you can do that at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can rate, subscribe, and <clears throat> And review us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify. Find me anywhere on the internet as Box Puppy, Box Tech, Box Cup, Box something or other, or Windjum, W Y N D G E M, on Twitch when my air condition is working. Which is mm -hmm. Boo. Damon? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9, on most bear-related sites are on Facebook. You can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter, but Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Gary? Um, if you would like to get in touch with me, there's plenty of ways to do that. Uh, mostly you're going to find me everywhere online as GearBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. Um, I do have a Twitter that is definitely not safe for worth um, that has three X's at the end of that. As a quick update, um, I am going to put a link in. Currently, the CDC does not have a subscription email option for the topic of monkeypox, but we're still going to put the link in because that could change at any time. Uh, but you can use that link to also uh, search for other things that you're interested in. So if there is a disease that affects your life or someone that you love, um, you could put that in there and then you'll get um, information from them as it comes about. Nice. And the link of that will be on the website. And with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Have a good one, y'all.